Welcome back to Morgan's video blog with writing tips from the pros and, of course, my own writerly musings. Today, I'm here with making the most of a virtual convention. Now, as conventions start to come back, some are still virtual, while many others contain virtual elements. After working as staff on over a handful of virtual conventions, here are my tips for getting the most out of the virtual side of a convention. Now, most of the tips from my quote unquote, Morgan's complete guide for attending a convention convey because a convention is a convention. So the first thing you need to ask yourself, should you attend the convention? There are many factors that go into it and you're the only one who can make the right call for you. Should you go in person, attend virtually or skip it altogether? Here are the eight questions I would ask myself. First, what is the focus of the con? Secondly, who are the guest speakers? Third, what events are available for you? What percentage of the con will be accessible from home? What sort of things can you attend? Um, question four, what are the expenses involved? Staying home saves a lot of costs over traditional conventions. No hotel room, no gas money, and usually much cheaper food. Um, question five, how accessible is it? What is your internet connection and what is the connection from the event? And are there adaptive technologies used to make it work for people who have questions about accessibility? Question number six, will your friends be there? Question number seven, what are the health numbers looking like in the region of the convention? And are there any health concerns for yourself or people you will be seeing in the short term after the convention? And of course, question number eight, what are you looking to get out of the convention? So all these thoughts in your head. Next up, you've decided you're going to attend virtually. What do you do before the convention starts? While no two virtual conventions are identical, in general, you should first make sure that you are registered for the convention itself and any workshops or limited space items that you're interested in. Secondly, you want to make sure that you can log on to all of the platforms that the convention is using that you might want to access from the device you plan on using ahead of time. You don't want to be trying to figure it out two minutes before the event starts, be it event space, meetup, Zoom, WebEx, Discord, Skype, GatherTown, Second Life, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. You want to log on and familiarize yourself with the basics of the platform. Update to the latest software so you don't get forced to do an update when you're trying to log into the event. Um, Third thing to do to prep is if you plan on using technologies to talk to or video chat with others, check your audio and your camera on the technologies you intend to use, adjust your lighting situation and test out blurring your background. If your background space is messy, consider investing in a headset if you've got like roommates or loud dogs or what have you. And the fourth thing you'll want to do is to check out the schedule and see what sort of events you may want to attend. Set alarms if you want. As a note, it is much easier to get distracted by life and the internet when at home rather than at a convention. So what sort of events can you find? Well, I'm speaking mostly for speculative fiction conventions that are fan run but uh, this can be general for many types of conventions. Very often you're gonna find book signings. If you're virtual, you may be ordered to, able to order book plates or signed books from the author. Um, there's very often readings, workshops. Uh, at uh, speculative fiction conventions, you'll often find writing workshops, sometimes dance, sometimes singing workshops, many of which you can do from home, but the experience can be both connecting and isolating. So check in with yourself and see where you're at. Obviously you can watch ceremonies uh, and panels. Panels in this sense are group discussions 
uh, from a small selection of panelists where the three to five people up at the front of the room discuss a variety of convention themed topics. The advantages to a virtual convention is the ability for the audience to make comments and catch that book title without derailing the discussion via the chat window. Um, there are presentations of all sorts. There's gaming, there's craft chats, there's art shows, there's vending, there's the con suite. For those who don't know, con suite is a general chat and hangout space for all attendees. There are party rooms, often open after 9 p.m. While some virtual ones can turn into one to two people, quote unquote, holding court, you can usually get around it by texting direct messages to others in the chat room or just chatting in the text portion. Um, but if there's other breakout rooms, you might want to hop around. And of course, there's general socialization. As a note, take care of yourself. Some people end up just listening to panels all day long in lieu of getting up, getting real meals, and getting sleep. With people able to join in from around the world, time zones have no meaning and you can find yourself chatting around the clock. Some people end up volunteering to do all the things because conventions can always, almost always, use more help. Pace yourself and acknowledge you need breaks too. If all else fails, tell yourself you're leaving that time block open in case of emergencies so you can fill in. So now that you're attending and you know what you're gonna see, how do you network? I mean, obviously we go to conventions to have fun and maybe to learn something, but there's also a networking component that many of us want to do while at a convention. So the struggle with the multitude of virtual conventions is that it can be harder for a desired speaker to say no to a convention when they don't have to go anywhere. And virtual conventions have become so commonplace that many speakers end up just showing up for their panels or other speaking engagements and not being otherwise available. So with your expectations now sadly lowered, here are some of the best ways to network. Number one, attend events and make a few topical questions or comments, even if it's just thanking the speakers. Secondly, join the social spaces and parties and contribute to the conversation without dominating it. Make sure that everyone gets a chance to talk. Number three, make sure that your badge, your nickname, display name, whatever, matches the name you're using for the event. I've been in too many panels where a speaker got there late because they logged in under an unassociated name and there was confusion and mass hysteria, cats and dogs living together. Uh, tip four for networking is to be open to new experiences and courteous to everyone. You never know if that person who's screaming because they're confused on the internet is that publisher you were really hoping to network with, or that author that you've been fangirling over for 20 years. So you can always be mean later. It never hurts to start off courteous. And tip five for networking, volunteering can be a great way for people to meet you. Next up, let's talk about tips for vending virtually. While I'm not a vendor myself, I've helped many set up and there these are my main takeaways in this virtual age tip one have a clean easy on the eyes and easy to navigate website secondly make purchasing items easy the fewer clicks and the less confusing the more likely you'll make a sale tip three if you have convention space to hawk your wares their website, a Discord channel, what have you, make sure to have a brief discussion of what you offer and a small selection of images that showcase good samples of your work in a space that doesn't make the reader scroll. I've seen people put their entire inventory 
on a Discord channel, which is like a chat room. And that's not what people are really looking for. You probably just want something about as wide as the screen with like five items, maybe two rows of that and a link to the website so they can go see your stuff on a space that's set up for vending. Addendum, if you have this space, a featured item or items of the day or sale of the day, um, you can announce those to get traffic into your space. And if the convention permits it, you can uh, post once a day in the convention spaces. Do not start spamming channels or you will leave a bad taste in everyone's mouths and the goodwill that you're giving away for the attention is probably not gonna be worth it. Uh, tip four for vending is be accessible for questions, be it text messaging, audio, video, or email. And number five, attend other things with your product name on your badge display name and follow those networking tips I just went over. So they'll be like, oh, I see that you also sell pens. Tell me more about that, etc." So that concludes the convention part. Let's talk a little about after the con. I find virtual conventions equally draining and only half as fulfilling as an in-person convention. Be sure to hydrate and give yourself plenty of rest after the convention and, and during it. Many people find the end of a convention, especially a virtual one, anticlimactic, which can really make your energy tank. If possible, have something set up for after the con ends either social time, a good meal, or maybe a book or TV reward escapism to lose yourself in for a few hours. Have you attended virtual conventions? Which ones have done it right? And what takeaways have you gotten from the ones that stumbled out the gate? As always, thank you for watching and tune in again next week for more writing tips and writerly musings. Bye-bye.